It's been around two decades since Football Manager was first released in 2004. Here's some of the fathers and sons who've now appeared in the franchise. Twenty years ago, Patrick Cliver had just signed for Newcastle on a free transfer. In the preceding six seasons, he'd been a mainstay in Barcelona's front line, finding the back of the net 122 times for the Catalan club. His only season in English football would be a disappointment, with him and Shearer combined scoring just 13 goals as the Magpies finished 14th. At the end of the campaign, he'd returned to Europe, but could never rediscover that form which made him one of Europe's most formidable marksmen. Two decades later, we find his son also lining up for Valencia, only this time there was probably more success. Patrick managed just two goals in an entire season at the Mestalla. Justin, on the other hand, found the back of the net eight times, helping engineer his summer transfer to Bournemouth. The 2005 season would be Diego Simeone's final as a professional player, having shown his qualities in Europe for over a decade with Sevilla, Lazio, Atletico Madrid and Inter Milan, he'd returned to his homeland with the racing club, even now at the age of 34. Physically, he's diminished, but he's still showing those elite mental qualities which have aided him so well in his managerial career. Interestingly, we're now rapidly closing in on the 20-year mark as a manager, and I think it's fair to say, with the financial constraints he's operated in, he's done a terrific job. Like his father, Giovanni Simeone has demonstrated his qualities in Serie A since 2016. Since then, at the time of recording, he's found the back of the net 72 times in the league and played a valuable role in helping Napoli win a historic Scudetto. His form has definitely dropped a little this year, though, and with the Copper America fast approaching, he's going to need to do something special to get a ticket to the USA this summer. Probably the best value signing in the history of Scottish football, Henrik Larsson joined Celtic for just £650,000 in 1997. Over the next seven seasons, he'd score 242 goals at the club and win eight trophies before he made a free transfer move to Barcelona. Whilst the goals definitely dried up a little, his time in Catalonia was still historic as he helped his new side win their second ever Champions League title. A little more of a nomadic beginning to Jordan Larson's career. Already at the age of 26, he's lined up for eight clubs over the last 12 seasons. After following in his father's footsteps with Hellingsborg, we now find him with fellow Scandinavian side FC Copenhagen. He's found his feet a little, contributing 11 goals over the last two seasons, as his side did a double. Earlier in his career, he won trophies with Sampdoria, Parma and Fiorentina. In 2005, we find Enrico Chiesa with Siena in Serie A. Despite his advancing years, this was actually one of his most prolific times of his entire career. He was in the midst of scoring 32 league goals with the club over three seasons. Eventually the goals would start to dry up a little though, and in 2008 he played his final Serie A season. His son Federico would begin his career with Fiorentina. In his first 153 professional games, he'd find the back of the net 34 times. This persuaded Juventus to sign him for a fee of over 50 million euros. Whilst he made a strong start to life in Turin, winning a cup double, a long-term knee injury put him out of action for almost a year. Time will tell whether he can return to the level he showed when he first emerged. Staying in Italy, to a player who needs no introduction, even here at the age of 36, Paolo Maldini is still a formidable defender. Just look at those mental attributes. In the 0405 season, he'd be a regular in defence as AC Milan would finish runner-up in both Serie A and the Champions League. This would be the closest he ever came to winning another Scudetto, before his eventual retirement in 2009. Maldini's second son Daniel would make his professional debut with AC in February 2020, but struggled over the coming years to make an impact. Loan moves would materialise with Spezia and Empoli, but once again they weren't the most fruitful. In January 2024, he joined Monza in Serie A, and is enjoying some of the best form of his career to date. If he continues like this, a return to the fold at Milan could be possible. Two decades ago, Claudio Reina was playing for a very different Manchester City side. Over four years there, he'd struggle with injuries, which isn't surprising when you see those physical attributes. He played just 87 Premier League matches before departing for MLS in 2007. Most recently, he's been active in the football world, working as a director with New York City FC and Austin FC. Like his father, 
Gio Reyna would be with New York City FC until 2019. The former, though, would leave North America to join Borussia Dortmund. Still now only 21 years old, Reyna has definitely been impactful over the last few seasons, but there's been so many injury issues. For Dortmund, he played just 90 league matches in nearly five years. Now with Nottingham Forest in the Premier League, hopefully he can reignite his career. Celebration 16 seems a little generous for Robbie Savage, but that's Football Manager 2005, I suppose. Back then, the Welshman had just departed Birmingham City to join Blackburn Rovers. The following year, they registered their joint best league finish of the 21st century with a sixth place and also narrowly missed out on a League Cup final. He'd stay in Lancashire for four years before he joined newly promoted Derby County. The less said about that season, the better. Like his father, Charlie Savage came through the Manchester United youth system. Likewise, he struggled for game time though, and would leave for passages new. Today he's with Reading in League One, and in pretty difficult circumstances, is doing alright at the club. One of the best defenders in modern football history, Lillian Turan. In a career which spanned 17 seasons, he won trophies with Parma, Juventus and Barcelona, as well as winning football's ultimate prize with the French national team in 1998. In this edition of FM, age 32, he's with the Turin side. A few years later, he'd be forced to move from the club as they were relegated in the Calciopoli crisis. Another with a number of sons to pick from, but I went with Kefren. A product of the Monaco youth system, he'd make his debut with the club in the 18-19 season. Within a year, he departed for Nice, where he's established himself as a first-team regular. In 2022, his side were unfortunate to miss out in the Cup de France final against Nantes. To a player who, in my opinion, is pretty underrated, and maybe a little unfortunate to have played on the front line for Brazil with Ronaldo and Ronaldinho, where they got a lot of the plaudits. In 2004, Rivaldo has just arrived at Olympiacos. Over the preceding three years, the goals had dried up a little for him in club football, but his arrival in Greece reopened the floodgates. He'd score 43 goals for the club in 95 games, as his side won a trio of back-to-back titles. Interestingly, he'd go on to play for another 10 seasons after this, with sides in Uzbekistan, Brazil, and Angola. In his first professional season, Rivaldinho would play alongside his father for Mogi Moram. In one game, both of them would even get on the score sheet. After showing early promise, he'd depart for Europe. Ever since, his career has become a little nomadic, playing in Romania, Bulgaria, and Poland but there have been successes, winning three domestic cups already. Some very talented players here, and those who have the challenge of trying to fill their father's boots. Time will tell just how successful they can be in their careers.